big issue in China right now is the rising unemployment rate mm. with young people. Yep. And I haven't really heard of a great solution to that. Um, maybe you've got one. For folks who are not here in China, there's been an idea that's existed for a long time in China, which is if you're seeking employment, the best possible outcome is you find something called a, a TF Onwat, right? Like an iron rice bowl, which is a metaphor for a job where you can eat and pay your bills for your whole life, right? And historically, that's been like government service or other types of big state and enterprise jobs or big company jobs where it's like you're there, you'd work there for 40 years, and then you retire. And the thing that's happening now is with a lot of companies making changes, downsizing, economic headwinds, there have been a lot of layoffs. And for the first time in my memory, I mean, I've been here for 15 years, you actually see a lot of unemployment among young people. Um, and so in that context, it's pretty surprising because, you know, for forever, basically in most people's memories, there's been so much opportunity and people could jump between jobs and there was so much to do, but actually now it's changing. And the interesting part is you have a lot of these young people who have lived overseas and then returned to China or been to prestigious universities or worked in very big companies, like really educated and skilled folks who don't have jobs. And what we're starting to notice is this set of people, they don't just want to sit around. You know, there's sort of a term tongue-ping you see online of lying flat where they, the claim is that people don't really want to work. And that may be true for some, but actually what we're starting to see is there's a big cohort of people who do want to do new work, but they don't necessarily want to work in these old iron rice bowl jobs that existed 10 or 20 years ago. Uh, recently, we made a video on Little Red Book about uh, this sort of phenomenon. Not exactly. Basically, I had been making content about cross-border e-commerce for a long time, and I got a message from a guy, uh, just a random fan on the internet, who said, uh, Dear Jim, you're American. Uh, I'm here in China. How do I make money from America via the internet? And I got this message, and I was like, this is stupid. And then I like stepped back for a second. Oh, this is actually emblematic of a question that everybody wants the answer to now which is like, how do I do this? And so I just sort of put on my thinking gap and I was like, oh, well, I'm going to make a video where I just break down like eight different gig economy websites where you can make money online. And there's a lot, right? There's like eBay, WhatsApp, there's freelancing platforms like TaskRabbit or Upwork or Fiverr or, you know, a variety of other websites. And I put this video online and I post most of my videos at like seven in the evening. I didn't expect much to happen, I went to bed, right? And I woke up the next day and like blurrily looking at my phone. And it's like, I had so many notifications that it like, it when you get past 999 notifications, it just turns into dot, dot, dot. Is there's it? so many. Fine, but like, <laughs> I was like, what? And I clicked into it and it was just like, it was like this insane perfusion of like thousands of messages from all these people. And they were like, oh my God, like there's all these websites where I can physically be sitting here in China but I could be doing graphic design for like a small business in America. And that business will pay like, you know, for instance, $50 per hour, which for instance, in the States, if you want to hire a graphic designer, who's good, that's a reasonable rate. Uh, but here in China, you take that $50, you bring it into room B, you know, seven to one ish, 350 room B per hour is a significant amount, especially if you do like 10 hours, 20 hours a week of provided services. And so you had this just, huge set of folks who had been inundating us with messages like how do i do this and that was the first revelation the second revelation was there's a man named Li Zhou, uh who is a chinese entrepreneur who originally went to i think it was either Tsinghua or beibao one of the top chinese universities and he made a course uh about this topic of uh ai specifically chat gpt so he was a guy who was educated and seemed quite smart and he went on the Chinese equivalent of like a Coursera or Udemy website. And he made a course just teaching people how to use ChatGPT and posted this online, but he didn't just post the course. In order to drive traffic for the course, he did live streaming. So in China, the way that you sell many products, whether it's a physical product or for instance, a, you know, a more abstract product like an online course is via live streaming. And so live streaming is you go on these platforms and you'll do like a live stream with your audience. And as you do the live stream, aggressively sell, sell, sell the product. And his pitch was basically if I was him and you were my audience, I'd say, there's all these new AI tools. The world is passing you by. Your neighbors on them, your colleagues are on them. They're all learning how to chat, use ChatGPT. And if you don't get on this thing now, 
you're going to be left behind. And by the way, uh, I've got a deal. And in the next 10 minutes, you can buy my course for, you know, 9.9, 99.9 Roman B. And of course, he would use this in very manipulative style of selling. But it was extremely successful, especially in second and third tier cities in China, where people had this vague awareness of AI, but they didn't really know what it was. And so he capitalized on this like desire to uh, learn about AI and ChatGPT, and he sold something like 50 million RuneB of courses in about two months, uh, about seven million US dollars of course sales. Looping back to what we are thinking about, uh, we're not trying to bilk anyone with dodgy AI courses, right? Uh, but I think what we realized is this kind of idea of online freelancing or service providing professional services, you do have all these really smart people here in China who are young, who are educated, who are skilled, and they're really seeking new opportunities. And at the same time, you have this you know, growing market for online education where people are really trying to find ways to learn about new topics and do so through these types of courses. And so we decided that we would, you know, come up with a course and basically teach folks how to uh, get onto these platforms because it's not just as simple as setting up an account. Um, one of the primary challenges that happens is when you get on these sites, it's about selling yourself as the service provider. And so many folks in China are brought up in like STEM education. Uh, a lot of people are, you know, very kind of bookish and intellectual. And a lot of the skills that we get in Western education systems like public speaking or podcasting or presenting ourselves, they're things that come more naturally for Western uh, folks. But for people here in China who are, you know, doing a completely different education system where that type of public expression isn't as valued, it's really hard for people to present themselves well, uh, especially to global uh, folks who are outside of China. Uh, potentially, you know, imagine like a mom and pop shop that needs graphic design and rural America or like, you know, the UK, like, uh, as a Chinese person likes communicating to them and their language is quite intimidating. And so we see an opportunity to give people, uh, some lessons in those tools and leverage our existing experience with video and storytelling and cross-border, uh, bilingual communication to help, help those folks find their next opportunity. Mm -hmm. I think it's brilliant because you're actually legit as well. So I get it on YouTube. I'll be watching a YouTube video and you get the name of the Singaporean, Malaysian <laughs> uh, leadership coaches that teach you how to invest and all this kind of stuff. But I don't know them. How right. can I believe that? It's great marketing. Sure. But the thing is with you is you've actually got the goods to sure. along. So I think with a training course and you've got the experience and the goods and trust here in China, I think it's a winner. Mm -hmm. I think it's brilliant. So I, I'm looking forward to that. I'll definitely, uh, I'll probably sign up to your course. No, no, please. And <laughs> that guy's course, was it actually good? Was it actually Lee Joe's course? Yeah. So I did download Lee Joe's course um, and I watched it. I mean, the thing is, his target audience is meant, I think, to be more like rural folks in China who really don't know much about these tools. Um, and so as a primer to like very, you know, relatively basic education about what AI is, uh, I think they're okay. Like if you'd never used ChatGPT before and you need to know like, okay, what is ChatGPT? What is a prompt? How do you write a prompt? How do you write a prompt that will get you the things you want, et cetera. So I think that kind of basic information was fine. Uh, you could argue that a course like that isn't needed, but again, if if you're living in you know, rural China and you've never used this type of system, maybe you do need it. So I would say it's like kind of a matter of perspective. Somebody who's cynical could say it's a waste of time or it's manipulative or a waste of money. But somebody could also say, like, it's better than any existing tools they have. And how are you going to promote this? You touched on the, the mm -hmm. live streaming size. Yeah, well, first of all, we're doing our exclusive premiere today on the Panda Profits uh, podcast. Uh, so that's number one. Uh, and then secondly, we're going to be uh, ourselves doing live streaming in China. And so basically the, the live streaming platforms here are one of the best ways to get the word out and not just like hard sell the product, but actually you can use it as a two-way forum. So folks can ask questions. They could come on our live stream and say like, hey, uh, I'm an architect. Are there opportunities for me to lay make money through these live stream, or excuse me, through these freelancing platforms? Or I have this skill, or I have X opportunity, or I have this professional credential. You know, Can I turn this into a job, yes or no? And so I think what we're trying to do is is not just treat it as like this hard sell approach, but kind of as an educational, fun way to add value. Um, 
we're also considering like playing around with different formats because if you watch a lot of live streams, it's a little bit like a old circus game. I don't know if you guys have those in the UK, but like, you know, spin the wheel or like uh, those games where you like toss the little plastic loops and try to land on an object. We've been getting some props, uh, including actually like a spinning wheel no, and that we're going to have in the background and like we're going to have some props that we're going to have like different guests. So mm. I think you have to you have to make it fun too. A lot of the live streams you see is usually just some like, you know, a bedraggled dude in like his bedroom lit up by the screen of his laptop and it's like, oh my God, <laughs> we want to do something that feels like fun and engaging and, you know, yeah. uh, hopefully that doesn't just feel like a really hardcore sales pitch. I think edutainment, that's the right word, isn't it? It's entertaining, but also you're going to learn something. And I think all these ingredients put together, it's, I think it's going to fly. I'm really looking forward. I'll, I'll be watching it. Fingers so. crossed. If you love the Panda Profits and you watch this channel, please show some Panda love and become a part of the growing number of viewers on this channel that have hit that subscribe button. It helps a lot. And the bigger the channel, the bigger the gets.